Howdy y'all, it's your favorite trainer with a belt buckle. Giving you a sneak peek on what it's like to become a nutrition coach with Show Up Fitness. The best nutrition program out there because you get to interact with registered dietitians. You get to ask questions like I did right here. What is the current scientific evidence behind getting your blood drawn when it comes to food allergies? Got to watch to find out. And then we go over a case example. You have two calls per week. You get to learn about macros, calculations, how to build a book of business, network with dietitians, but most importantly, help your clients safely as a nutrition coach. If you want to become a nutrition coach, comment below. Let us know what you think of this video. And remember, keep showing up. I'm curious to know the current evidence behind any type of blood testing for food allergies and stuff like that. Ah, uh, that's a good one. Uh, it, not very solid. It is not very solid at all. So um, there are other ways in which we can assess for allergies, but you're better off seeing a in actually seeing an allergist. So forget about like the GI component of that for a minute, because there's a lot of people kind of pushing, I think it's IgA, IgE types of testing. It's a big waste yeah. of money. A lot of that can shift around. Um, so some of it would be if you're having GI issues in particular, like, yes, please see a gastroenterologist. Can we see if something else is going on? But there are a lot of cases, especially when it comes to some of the GI things, if we're talking about IBS, so irritable bowel syndrome, which is kind of this blanket diagnosis when they don't exactly know what's going on. You might be responding to certain foods or a client might be responding to certain foods, not because they're allergic to them, but because their inflammatory response is already going off or they could have other things going on like a mast cell syndrome. So there could be other medical conditions going on where their body is kind of just hyper responsive to things. So if they end up taking a food test, which again, costs quite a bit of money, and they're told, well, you can't eat gluten, dairy, you can't eat legumes or beans or any of these things. Now we're just taking more food out of their diet unnecessarily, potentially putting deficiencies into play um, when their body's already responding to things. So obviously I have strong feelings about it, um, but I, I've just watched too many people go through it. But on the professional end, there is not a lot supporting that type of testing as, as a green light. Yes, that's what we need to do. Um, if you're navigating GI pieces as an individual, if your clients are navigating it, you need to see a dietitian. You also need to see a gastroenterologist as a starting point, depending on the severity of those responses, Auto, autoimmune. Um, so either a rheumatologist or allergist should also be the referral. So kind of deferring to the experts to let them do what they do and kind of figure out why is this going on? What's the root cause? Um, and then again, I think the advantage to having a dietitian on board in particular is depending on the different contexts where I see things pop up, I can usually lean into certain things. So, you know, my population being predominantly female athlete throughout life cycles, I end up seeing a lot of pregnancy postpartum. There's a lot of weird stuff that pops up for women after they've given birth. Um, and there might be some deficiencies already going on. So they're responding to things in a more sensitive place. Of course, their bodies are sensitive, but it doesn't mean they've now developed a food allergy. You might actually need to replete some of their nutrient status and that might settle their system, um, which I would argue is more often the case than not. So, Thank you. You're welcome. You set me off on like a, a bullet there. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. I love it. It's really great. <laughs> um, any other kind of thoughts while we're we're getting into it? And I don't even know where was our. We have talked about weight loss. We okay. up, but there's a couple. Yeah. Can yeah my uh, my my sister and her husband went through that. So yeah, I mean, there's a couple different versions. Um, this is, and I fully, full disclosure, like this is not my area of expertise. Again, like, again, there are dietitians who specialize in this, but, um, and I have not worked with uh, someone who has undergone bariatric surgery in five or six years, but I can, you know, speak to it in, in brevity from a macro view, if you will. So 
first, I think in, in acknowledging like what is a gastric surgery, yes, there are three different types. So you could have a gastric sleeve, you could have a gastric bypass, and then there's a, a band or like a lap band. So the sleeve um, is where the surgeon removes most of your stomach. So they leave like a banana shaped section that ends up being closed with staples. So ultimately what that does is it limits the amount of food that can fit in your stomach. So early satiety, you feel good longer. Um, what's important to understand with this one in particular is that can impact your hormonal status. It can impact uh, the bacteria in your digestive tract. Obviously it will also impact your appetite and metabolism. So a couple of things going on there, but a gastric sleeve cannot be reversed. So once you do that, it's done. Um, the second one is a gastric bypass, uh, also called a ruin XY gastric bypass, and it's a three-step process. So what first happens is a surgeon goes in and they staple your stomach. Um, they create a small pouch in the upper section. And what the staples do is they make your stomach much smaller. So again, you know, early satiety, you eat less because you feel fuller longer. Uh, the second part is surgery on your small intestine. So they divide that into two parts and attach the lower part directly to the small stomach pouch. So you're bypassing part of your intestine. Um, so that food essentially bypasses most of your stomach and the upper part of your small intestine. So you end up absorbing fewer calories. Um, Again, I just want to give you an idea of what happens in each of these, but it, it, because of the side effects and things that can occur, because a lot of that will inform some of the questions that this person has. Um, and then the third part of this is the surgeon then reconnects the upper part of the small intestine to a newer location farther down the smaller intestine. So, you know, again, they are stapling your stomach, they are splitting your small intestine, which is like very big and long and windy and breaking it up into two parts. So that food bypasses part of it and goes straight to the end. Um, so the idea is that you absorb less food. Um, so again, a uh, couple things that happen there. The It allows for some of the digestive juices in the stomach to flow from the bypassed part of the small intestine to the lower part of the small intestine. That is important so that food can be fully digested. Um, I have nothing you know, against any of these surgeries, but I think it's important that we talk about it because physiologically, the way that we are meant to, to digest and absorb food, like that's why food hits certain part of our bodies at different points in time. Um, there are gastric juices in your stomach that are required to break down food so that by the time it gets to your small intestine and then your large intestine and then your colon, it's been broken down because a lot of that can lead to GI distress. So all of which is to say, um, part of that reconnection is the goal that these stomach juices can flow down so that food can be fully digested. Um, but again, this particular type of bypass, the gastric bypass can also have an impact on hormonal status, bacteria, other things in the digestive tract that would also affect appetite and metabolism. Um, it can be reversed. It is difficult to reverse. So uh, again, going back, the sleeve, the gastric sleeve is not a reversible surgery. Gastric bypass is hard to reverse. It is possible to reverse that. Um, the last one is, or there's four, but there's also a gastric band. So the lap band. Um, and what happens there is a surgeon puts a ring that has an inflatable band around the top of your stomach. And again, we're creating a small pouch. So like the sleeve and like the bypass, the band makes you feel fuller because it's giving your stomach a smaller area to be able to hold food. Um, this one is reversible. So the surgeon, they can adjust this band size to resize the opening from the pouch to the rest of your stomach. So sometimes what you'll see with um, people who end up having the surgery is that they might have to get it adjusted. They don't respond very well to it. Some people will have it removed. Um, so this one requires several follow-ups on the backside to adjust that. Um, yeah, so that is that one. Uh, it's actually, this is the least common. I see a question, Corey, go for it. <clears throat> so got a question. I know um, I haven't had people in my, well, that I've personally trained. I haven't really asked people in my group fitness classes they've had that, but no one's ever mentioned it. 
Um, but I do know um, my dad used to work with a coworker, um, and he had the surgery, and he lost some weight, and then he gained it back. And I'm like, what? So I was confused because if they go in there, you know, like I mean, he 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 looked exactly the same. Like he had lost all this weight for a while. He went back to his bad eating, and then he just gained it all back. So, I mean, you're saying about like when they go in there, they cut, some of it can be reversed and those other stuff, but it's just like, I guess, how bad is it that it's kind of come back? Like, is it like 10 times worse now since they had that surgery and they gained it all back? My, and again, some of this isn't my wheelhouse, but my understanding is I think your, your, you can, your stomach can grow. So initially it's very, very small, but if you keep eating or if you think about quality of food and overall calories, like you can still get in 